What is going on guys, it's Jake. We're back in for another YouTube video. It's the weekend here, trying to find some time to work on the engine. And today I'm gonna be showing you guys my parallel fuel system. Now the feed is at 8 a.m. If you guys have been watching, you know I installed the radium dual pump hanger. And I've recently routed all the lines from the rear of the car all the way to the front. And I am working on building the parallel fuel system on the engine before it actually goes in the car just so that way it'll be a little bit easier and it'll kind of be like a plug and play kind of setup so if you guys missed the last video we installed the IAG alternator relocation bracket and also painted the alternator painted the power steering and got rid of the tensioner bracket on the stock power steering bracket so super happy with all that and how that looked one thing I left out in the last video we were hitting down here but I actually ended up grinding a little tab off that holds that some of you guys are doing the install, you'll see what I mean, but I think it'll be all right now since it isn't hitting anything, and I'm pretty happy with all these brackets. I did have to bend my tube over just a little bit because it was touching right here, and I may end up through bolting this forward rather than coming through the backside just because I don't really like having the threads hanging out right here and then a head sticking out right here. I'd rather thread it through this and then just put a nut on the backside to make it tight. So thinking about doing that, just something to consider. Also gonna paint this, but Without further ado, let's go ahead and show you guys the fuel lines. So starting at the car here, this is the 8AN feed line that's coming all the way from the back of the car. Now I've left it long just because I'm going to need some of this line and I've been cutting off of this end so that way I won't be short when I come to here because there is no connections besides a fuel filter between this and the radium dual pump hanger set up back there. So let's go back here. I'm going to show you guys that fuel filter real quick that I was telling you about. Right here, it's coming from the fuel hanger and the two pumps. And as you can see, we have a inline style 8AN fuel filter here. So super happy with all that and how it came out, I'm trying to hold the flashlight and the camera. But anyway, see it's all very tight and right. And there was a little lip here on the side of the fuel tank. So I actually ended up putting some hose around that so that way it wouldn't rub a hole in the AN lines. But all this stuff is wire tied really nice. Now I do understand it will travel a little bit with this suspension, but it does have some wiggle room, so I'm not too worried about it. But now we can take a look in the back of the car here. And you can see how the lines come up through here just like they would in the stock location. There is typically a grommet here, but the grommet has too small of holes to use. And also these lines come in at such an angle, it just wouldn't be optimal. So. Under here, you can see they go under the carpet. I'll pop the carpet up right here just so I can show you how I did it. And you see I kind of used the stock location fuel line routing to get this stuff all in here nice and right. Held it secured with wire ties. And that is basically how it is all the way up to the front of the car here where it goes through the firewall. And I'll show you guys that real quick. So as it goes up, it goes right through here and up under here so right there through the firewall which i do have the kill mat kind of sitting around there just so that it doesn't rub a hole in it and these are both the lines the 8 a.m feed and the 6 a.m return so that is how we delivered the fuel to the front of the car um, some people will say to route it underneath the car but in my case the stis typically come with like a plate almost that you can take off and then secure the lines like under the plate under the car but the foresters don't come with that so I figured it'd be the easiest option just to route them in the stock location which is what we did so keep in mind if you guys are doing that to a forester then it might be a better option just to run them in the car but anyway we're gonna go ahead and build the fuel lines on top of the engine today now I have already done the rear lines so what's going to happen is the feed line is going to come directly in on this y right here and it's going to go out to the front of the rails so right here and right here and the lines are going to come out come into the back go straight to another t and then over to the fuel pressure regulator now this is what they call a parallel fuel setup so that basically means that these two lines this one and this one are the exact same length and vice versa for these two that are coming out the front here. This one right here to this one over here will be the same length and same thing for this one to this one. So it's very important that all that stuff is the same length and I figured it'd be a pretty good option to go ahead and make this stuff right now before the engine's in the car so I don't kill my back trying to make all this and uh, make it look right and tight. So 
you guys know we got the breather hoses on here and one thing i did to differentiate the breather hose from the fuel lines is i put a little electrical tape around each end so that will tell me if i'm looking at the engine bay which ones are fuel lines which ones are breather lines which sometimes can get confusing because there's a little bit different weave right here but that's the only difference these hoses are 8an black everything's the same so it's kind of unfortunate but we did put those pieces of electrical tape around there but yeah we're gonna go ahead and build the front ones and then we'll show you guys so i'm trying to decide how to route these lines correctly the rear lines i'm pretty happy with but these front lines are going to be a bit more challenging and one thing i wanted to mention is i'm sure you guys have seen the guys doing this stuff with the big garden shear looking tool but i've actually been using a battery terminal cutter and it actually works pretty well pretty similar to what it looks like those work so yeah i uh have actually marked it so the good thing with ptfe lines is you can put them on the fitting before and kind of look at where they're going to be it's hard for me to do this with two hands but basically there's going to be a little bend in this line and it's going to come up and go in here and i have taped it off where i'm going to cut it so i'm gonna go ahead and cut that and then i'll do the same thing on this side and cut it the exact same length as this hose is so i'll hold this hose up to my other hose and make sure they're the exact same before i actually put any of the an fittings on so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get these lines cut and i'll show you guys after that all right so i cut these two lines at the exact same length and i'm pretty happy with how they turned out i've just got them pushed on there so i haven't actually assembled the fittings yet but i'm pretty happy with how they turned out we're going to be able to secure it to the middle of the engine right here and the plan is to have it kind of follow the dog bone mount right here down and come right up the top like that sitting here pretty much in the center of the engine you got to remember the cylinders are a bit offset so one of the lines is going to have a little bit more of, of a bend in it than the other one but that's completely fine and normal so yeah we got the lines parallel everything's right so now i'll show you guys how to assemble the hose and we'll get them on the engine so stay tuned all right guys so on to the fun part we're going to be assembling the fuel lines here with these ptfe an lines this is actually an 8 an but it would be similar no matter what size the an is but basically this is a three-piece fitting rather than your traditional two-piece fitting that comes with your regular rubber liner fuel line so basically what has to happen is right away this nut has to be screwed on to here which shouldn't give you too much trouble we'll just put that right on here like this and you want to do that to both sides first before you actually go to assemble the line itself so we'll do that for one and we'll grab the other one and they actually call these little things furls or acorns or whatever you want to call them we'll put this one on this side just so that way it's already on there because the procedure for doing these it's very easy to forget to do this and then you're in a little bit of a jam after that so got that on we'll go ahead and do that to this line too and by the way i'm no pro at this I actually did my fair share of struggling when I first started so it's kind of just a little bit of a technique thing and just practice makes perfect so let's go ahead and go on to the next step so the next thing we're going to be doing is removing this outer nylon layer and how we're going to do that is take this razor blade and trim it around the edge because this is kind of a three layer hose so you have the inside PTFE the stainless steel and then the nylon braiding so we want to get rid of that nylon braiding because that'll really help us when we go to put our fittings together i have seen some people not do this and get away with it but it made it easier and that's just what i found worked for me so that's what i'm going to do but yeah i'll catch up with you guys when we get all these off of all four ends okay so here we go we have all of our ends looking similar now we basically cut a layer of the nylon off and here they are sitting right here now i do tape the end just to make sure that it doesn't start to fray again which is good so now the next step is to 
put a little screwdriver in between the plastic piece and the stainless steel braid just to get it away from the PTFE plastic hose. So that way we can slide one of these acorns down onto there. So I'll show you guys the first one and then I'll go ahead and knock out the other three and then we'll go ahead and get to assembling these things. So stay tuned. So if you have a little screwdriver like this with a little tip, you can get in between the braid and the plastic hose and just peel it out just in the slightest bit just to help us get that acorn in between there. So go ahead and get this thing in here. Sorry, it's hard for me to do while filming, but yeah, so getting it pretty much away from there. And now we'll go ahead and put the acorn on it. So what you're gonna wanna do, there's like a ledge in this acorn and you're gonna wanna make sure that this plastic hose is bottomed out into that ledge. So we're gonna slide it onto the hose here and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your hose doesn't kink as well. So you may have to push it into the acorn with your screwdriver. And then what I like to do is once you get it all started, I like to take it and push it down onto the bench and really make it go up into that acorn really nice to where it's bottomed out. So now it's hard to see, but you can see that the plastic hose is bottomed out in the acorn and that's exactly how we want it to be. So then that way when we put this on, it'll create a great seal. So I'll go ahead and do this to the other three and then we'll go ahead and start assembling the fittings themselves. All right, so I have the acorns placed in the ends and all of the hoses bottomed out in the acorns on both lines specifically. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lube this up pretty good, put a little oil in there or something on there. And also same thing within there, that'll help a little bit. And then we're gonna push this into this piece and you'll feel it kinda go in there. And then we'll get this nut here and slide this up and start to start to thread this into here and that'll basically seal everything and make it all work so let's go ahead and get some lube on this thing and we'll push it on there so drip a little bit of that down in there and now we're just going to push this on here and you may have to twist it that'll help a little and you can also push down on a bench see it just hit its first little indent and then we'll see if we can get it the rest of the way in yeah so just like that it will take some force but it'll go right in there like that and then what we're gonna do is basically take this nut right here and we're gonna start to turn it righty tighty over these pieces of wire there and you should clear the wire and then be able to start it onto the fitting and this may be pretty challenging depending on how tight it is so just take your time and put it together but we'll go ahead and get the rest of these on here and i'll show you guys so stay tuned all right so now that we are at this point of putting the fittings together we haven't tightened them up but we've got them all started so now i'm going to go over to the vise and we'll show you guys how to finish these off i actually don't have any angle iron for this right here aluminum angle iron that is so i'm actually just putting some painters tape on the vise itself and we're going to clamp the bottom section of the fitting into the vise just like this and then we're going to slowly torque down on the top one all right so i got a light here so we can kind of see what we're doing but you don't want to clamp this thing in the vise too tight because obviously it's aluminum and you don't want to hurt the fitting or make it an oval shape so now what we have is the aluminum wrenches from ict and they won't hurt the fitting. So we're just gonna slowly turn this thing together. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this fitting does not need to be bottomed out. So basically what I mean is it is not necessary to have this piece and this piece touching. As long as this piece is tight in this piece and it will, and it will not back out, that is not creating the seal. So you won't have to worry about that. But one thing that you see commonly is people over tightening these and hurting the fittings. So that we do not want to do because these are right in the engine bay and that's why we have these wrenches and stuff. So we'll go ahead and get these things put together and then we'll show you guys putting them on the engine. 
All right, so I went ahead and finished assembly on all the PTFE lines for the front of the fuel rails. And as you can see, I have them mocked up on the engine. This is not the final install. Everything will have to come back off because I do have plans to get the TGVs and the alternator bracket powder coated, along with a couple other things that you'll have to wait and see in the next video. But yeah, super happy with how these are coming out. Everything's looking really clean. It's extremely hard with these Subaru motors to keep everything looking really right and tight just because of how much stuff there is and has to be going across the engine. So we still haven't put the actual engine harness on the engine yet. So we're gonna have to do that still. We still got lines over here that are gonna be going to a custom catch can you guys will see in a future video, as well as our main block breather here in the back. So we still have a lot to do. We're making good progress, but it just is really hard to actually, you know, make make a lot of progress all at once. So doing it little by little, but keeping you guys in the loop. So we'll be back for a new video soon. If you like the video, be sure to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.